anesthesiologists and intensivists across Europe and around the world are providing essential, life-saving care that has an impact on all areas of medicine. In 2020, the importance of working as a unified global community to maintain the very highest standards of practice and patient safety grow ever more clear. Now, this community is coming together virtually to enhance knowledge, catch up on innovative techniques and learn the latest guidelines. It's Euro Anesthesia 2020 and we're Euro Anesthesia TV. We're back in the Euro Anesthesia TV studio as we bring you day three of the Euro Anesthesia 2020 meeting. It's inspiring to see such a diverse community come together online to contribute to the growth and innovation found in their field by learning on the very latest research, techniques and guidelines presented during this Congress, especially during these very challenging times. On our final show today, we discuss artificial intelligence with Dr. Frederic Michard and stop by Western University in London, Ontario, Canada. Finally, we'll take a look at the next generation with some insights from the Isaac Trainee Committee. First though, it's been a tough year, both emotionally and physically, for anesthesiologists and the medical field as a whole. Offering some support and insights is Professor Thomas Fuchsbuder and Professor Wolfgang Burra. Patients become older and older, comorbidities become more and more important, and at the same time, there is an enormous financial pressure uh, on the whole on, on, on these whole procedures. As more and more surgeries are realized on an ambulatory basis, and the anesthesiologist is in the middle of that process. Our patients expect that not only the operation is done successfully, but there, that there is a value for their health, adequate pain therapy, the ability to recover as fast as possible, the anesthesiologist is the primary responsible specialist in the hospital. It's one of the particularities of our speciality that we are, in most of the countries, anesthesiologists and intensive care physicians. And this double competence, anesthesiology and intensive care, is one of the big advantages during the COVID crisis because it allows us to reduce the ORA program and uh, relocate these human resources to the ICU and to the intermediate care. In this crisis, the network built by ESA and esa uh, functioned well and allows us in very short ways to connect each other, to share our experience and to, to help as much as possible each other. esa is, is, is the primary society in Europe where we all come together, we know each other. And I remember several days where colleagues from Italy, from Spain, from the UK and, and, and myself were on the phone to share our experience, to help each other, but also to react in, an, in, a, in a situation with an enormous amount of psychological stress for all of us. We built this network over the last 20 to 30 years and uh, we could profit or we profited from this network in this, in this crisis. Now. We have to move forward like we did it. We can do it. We make the difference for the patients. It will be a very long winter, but we are able to get these things done if we do it together. Terms like machine learning and artificial intelligence are becoming more and more common in all walks of life. But how do they apply to medicine and anesthesiology in particular? To discuss his talk, Big Data and Machine Learning, what do these buzzwords really mean I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Frederic Michel. Dr. Michel, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So how might these concepts be applied in medicine? And are they being utilized anywhere already? So, um, so far, machine learning has been used mainly uh, to detect abnormalities, uh, to make a diagnosis, for instance, or to forecast uh, clinical deterioration. And uh, in practice, uh, it's mainly about uh, diagnosis or uh, detecting abnormalities. For critical care doctors, for instance, uh, images are also uh, clearly a field where uh, machine learning can help a lot. 
uh, echo images or CT scan images can be analyzed automatically by machine learning algorithm. And it has been used recently, for example, in uh, COVID-19 patients to clearly diagnose a disease just looking at images. How might machine learning be able to predict adverse events before they happen? So uh, the science of prediction is called predictive analytics. And it's clearly both appealing from a scientific standpoint, but also uh, sometimes difficult to apply at the bedside. Uh, for instance, there are algorithms which are able to predict mortality in ICU patients. But if an algorithm tells you that the probability uh, of death is 66% uh, for a given patient, I'm not sure it's going to change the way you treat your patient. Uh, on the other hand, if you have an algorithm able to predict post-operative complications, complications after a major surgery, uh, then that could be very useful I mean, to improve the surgical pathway. So what does the future look like then? And where might predictive algorithms help the most? So probably the combination of uh, new systems, new uh, wearables to monitor patients continuously and smart software able to tell us who is at risk of clinical deterioration, who is at risk of ICU transfer, is clearly a major opportunity to improve outcome in surgical patients. Dr. Misha, many thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Euroanesthesia TV is brought to you from the fully virtual Euroanesthesia 2020, featuring interviews with key speakers and updates about the scientific programme presented in this meeting. We've also travelled the world to bring you insights into the global field of anesthesiology and intensive care. You'll find us on the virtual meeting platform as well as online and on social media. We'll bring you a new episode each day of the meeting and make sure to click through for much more. Now to Canada, where Western University is offering fellows a diverse and unrivaled experience. Let's take a look. My name is Erin McCabe and I'm a fellow with the Department of Anesthesia and Perioperative Medicine in London, Ontario in Canada. My fellowship is in obstetric anesthesia. And I'm a clinical fellow in neuroanesthesia. I'm doing the cardiac fellowship in uh, anesthesia. London is a great place to live and work because it's such a diverse place. I arrived here in uh, London, Ontario about uh, three years ago um, and I found it for me the ideal place to be. There is so much opportunity for learning, a lot of opportunity for teaching. We have three different hospital sites. With that unique patient population, we are offering 10 different fellowships. I like the community of a large fellowship group. We meet out of the hospital because we all come from different cultures. It's kind of an adventure and for me the adventure was so positive that in the end I stayed. Welcome to London, Ontario. We look forward to seeing you soon. Great to see the experiences offered to those just getting started in anesthesiology. ASAIC of course plays a key role in supporting trainees in the field. To hear about their work and why you should become an ASAIC member, let's hear from the trainee committee. It's important for trainees to be part of the ASAIC because the society offers trainees the opportunity for lifelong learning. I think being a member of the ASAIC is essential to all anesthesiology trainees. They can apply for positions in almost all ASAIC committees or even to be elected as a trainee representative in their respective countries. Members of the ASAIC have the unique opportunity to have access to quality scientific materials such as the European Journal of Anesthesiology. You can meet uh, in, on social media, on the website on, or on congress, on webinars many other trainees from all around the Europe. Although we are separated by different borders, we are all residents in anesthesiology. And ASAC is the perfect network to share all these experiences. This concept of interconnectivity with your peers, just not in your hospital, but throughout Europe is something that trainee committee can provide. Through working with the ISAIC, its National Council and our trainees committee, I have gotten to know many different anesthesiologists and different ways of working in Europe, which has helped me to expand my horizon personally and professionally. I have had the opportunity to apply to several leadership positions and the honor to represent all European anesthesiology trainees through ASAIC board. I'm happy that I can first-handedly 
communicate and share all the news and new opportunities with the rest of the trainees in Europe and just in a way bring them closer together, which is the main goal. I believe that the ISAIC and the Euroanesthesia Congress are important because I want my specialty to keep being innovative. We can show that we want to teach, to learn and also be heard in Europe and worldwide. When we work together with different viewpoints, we can find the optimal way for personal and professional growth leading to a better care for our patients. The SIC Trainees Committee every year prepares very interesting scientific programs for trainees. While making the program, we are always trying to do our best to come up with the topics which are the most important for trainees in their daily practice. For me, the story begins actually two years ago in Copenhagen when I won the ESA Trainee Travelship Grant and I got the chance to be there. I got a closer look on how the trainee community works. I remember uh, thinking and just saying to myself, uh, what if I can be a member of the trainee community? To attend this conference is essential for all European anesthesiology trainees to understand best current practices and I am sure this year's virtual edition will be another landmark on the history of the Congress. We are available 24-7 and also don't be shy to use all the opportunities that the SAIC offers. If you're not already, then do make sure you become a member of ESAIC. Now that's it from Euro Anesthesia TV for this unique an exciting virtual edition of Euroanesthesia 2020. There's plenty to learn and plenty to take home to hospitals across Europe. If you've missed anything here on Euroanesthesia TV, remember everything remains online indefinitely. So click through to find plenty more shows and clips covering all of this year's key topics. Until next year then, good luck and keep up the great work.